ಶ್ರೀಮಾನ್ ವೆಂಕಟನಾಥಾರ್ಯ ಕವಿತಾರ್ಕಿಕ ಕೇಸರಿ ವೇದಾಂತಾಚಾರ್ಯ ವರ್ಗ್ಯೋಮೇ ಸನ್ನಿದತ್ತಾಂ ಸದಾಹೃತಿ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸರಂಗ ಪರಕಾಲ ಮುಣಿತ್ರಯ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಾತ್ಮರಕ್ಷಣ ಯತಿಗಾಗಮಾಂತ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಪರಿಪೂತ ಮಣರ್ಗಶೀಲ ಗೋಪಾಲ ದೇಶಿಕ ಮುನಿ ಗುರುಮಾಶ್ರಯಾಮಃ ಪರಾಶರ ಮುನಿ ವಂದೇ ಕೃತ ಪೌರ್ವಾನ್ನಿಕ ಕ್ರಿಯಂ ಮೈತ್ರೇಯ ಪರಿಪ್ರಚ ಪ್ರಣಿಪತ್ಯ ವಿವಾದ್ಯ ಚ ಸೊ ವಿ ಹವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಫಾರ್ಚುನೇಟ್ ಟು ಎಂಜಾಯ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪುರಾಣ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಸಾತ್ವಿಕ ಪುರಾಣಮ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಪುರಾಣ ರತ್ನ ದ ಜೆಮ್ ಅಮಾಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ಪುರಾಣಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನ್ಯಾರೇಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಸೇಜ್ ಪರಾಸರರ್ ಟು ಹಿಸ್ ಡಿಸೈಪಲ್ ಸೇಜ್ ಮೈತ್ರೇಯರ್ ವೆನ್ ಮೈತ್ರೇಯರ್ ಆಸ್ಟ್ ಇಮ್ ಜೆನರಿಕ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿ ಸಾಯ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಏರ್ಲಿ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಹೌ ಇಸ್ ದ ಸೃಷ್ಟಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ವೇರ್ ಡಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಎಂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಕೋಟಿಂಗ್ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ ವಾಕ್ಯಮ್ಸ್ ಕೋಟಿಂಗ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಲರ್ನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಗ್ರ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಫಾದರ್ ಸೇಜ್ ವಸಿಷ್ಠ ಸೇಜ್ ಪರಾಸರರ್ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಪೆಸಿಫಿಕ್ ಆನ್ಸರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಫಾರ್ ಅ ಜೆನರಿಕ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ದ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಸ್ಪೆಸಿಫಿಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಕಂಪೈಲ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪುರಾಣ ಸೊ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ವೀಕ್ ವಿ ಎಂಜಾಯ್ಡ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಅಕ್ರೂರರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಗೋಪಿಕಾಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಾರಿ ಉದ್ದವ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದ ಗೋಪಿಕಾಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಗೋಪಾಸ್ ನಂದ ಗೋಪಾಸ್ ಪ್ಯಾಲಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕೇಮ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ಪೀಸ್ಫುಲ್ ಮೆಸೇಜ್ ಫ್ರ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಗೋಪಿಕಾಸ್ ಹೌ ದೇ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಇನ್ ಲವ್ ಆಲ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ನಾವು ದಿಸ್ ವೀಕ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಸಿ ಆಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎಸ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಜರಾಸಂದನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಾಲ ಯವಣ ಇನ್ಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಕಂಸ ದ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಸ್ ಮಾಮ ಅಂಕಲ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಟೂ ವೈಫ್ಸ್ ಬೈ ನೇಮ್ ಅಸ್ತಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತಿ ದೇ ವೇರ್ ದ ಡಾಟರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಜರಾಸಂದ ದ ಪವರ್ಫುಲ್ ರೂಲರ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಗಧ ದೇಶ ಮಗಧ ದೇಶ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ದೇರ್ ಕಂಸ ವಾಸ್ ಕಿಲ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಕೃಷ್ಣ who was like a 16 age boy these two queens of the dead king asti and prapti the spouses of kamsa they went to bagada and related to their father about the happenings in the palace at mathura about the killing of kamsa by krishna so he was raged by the news and jarasandha was equally ferocious he was demonic so jarasandha decided to get rid of the earth get rid of the entire yadava clan from the earth he collected a huge army he gathered and with the whole army which is like 23 23 millions he surrounded the city of mathura on all sides krishna saw what was happening how they were coming the army he saw the army which was like an ocean of men the army was covering up the city on all sides the city of mathura was so small and the people were completely panic they ran here and there when they realized what was happening krishna had several thoughts because they were coming at a distance he thought of himself shall i kill only jarasandha without killing the army or should i command the entire army after that or shall i destroy him as well as the army he thought for a while and he said i have come to this earth come down for to get the burden from the earth just for purpose of lessening the burden of the earth it is but i destroy the army and i not jarasandha because he will then come again and and again i will keep destroying his army which is also equally demonic which is sure to be as immense as the present one every time because he has got a tremendous army krishna and rama decided to fight destroy the army and let the master return to his kingdom unharmed jarasandha so even as they were discussing the matter the brother saw the both the brother saw two chariots which appeared before them they appeared from the heaven from the devaloka 
they were as glorious as the sun the charioteers look look like devatas so krishna said rama balarama the chariots that have been sent to us have all the arms necessary and i therefore ask you to take the arms against the ocean of men coming and lead us to victory you know the purpose for which we have come to this earth let us destroy the immense army right away so dressed in the garb of warriors to fight in the forefront the two young men followed they went in went to fight the army they commanded was very small and meager compared to one they were facing krishna's charioteer was called daruka and when they came out into the open krishna blew his panchajanya which is the conch white conch shell and the sound of the conch filled the minds of enemies with fear jarasandha saw krishna for the first time he came near krishna so you are krishna so you are the lowliest of the lowliest because you killed your own uncle i do not like to fight with a sinner like you it is beneath my dignity and i am ashamed to fight with a coward like you who just went uh, went and killed the uncle when he was completely unprepared go back into the city krishna you go as far as you balarama if you can muster up courage to fight with me come i will i will completely split your body with my arrows you will surely reach the heavens reserved for heroes of course the alternative is you may kill me also krishna interrupted him you are a king you should know by now the real heroes don't talk don't yap they show in action you are therefore forgiven because you are fast appre- appre- approaching you are fast nearing your final end and a dying man is up to talk in a disjointed manner like you the fight began right away and there was such a cloud of dust covering the entire field the citizens of mathura stood in their terraces they could see nothing but the red cloud they could not see krishna they could not see balarama they could not see their chariots they they only saw garuda for krishna and the palm tree for rama they were the krishna and balarama were insistent and bent on destroying the entire army in a systematic streamlined manner they went around the ocean of men and they killed the whole army balarama grabbed jarasandha in his arm krishna however did not wish the death of jarasandha because he will, he is going to be killed later by bhima so he told his brother to let him go free jarasandha was grief he was full of grief and anger it is it is a, it's an insult for such a such a king such a demon like jarasandha to be completely conquered and to let go free just like what ravana was told indrupoi nalaiva go back today and come back tomorrow fully fresh with all arms and the chariot when he was completely armless so now taking pity on him krishna wanted to let him go free so he went back to magadha completely highly insulted he could not forgive the two brothers at all the insult was still ranking rankling in his heart it was full of that rage and everybody comforted don't worry there is no need for you to be depressed we will go back and hit him later with full full power he decided to perform tapas and go back to fight krishna in the meantime went back to mathura he had killed kamsa and now the two valiant brothers sent back jarasandha after destroying the army 
there was great joy in the every citizen of mathura now every time the this guy jarasandha came 17 times with a new and bigger army every time every time the army was destroyed by krishna and balarama and his life was spared he went back insulted hurt wounded every time the humiliation was felt insanely by jarasandha and he didn't want to give up the 18th time when jarasandha was taking a different route to mathura with a fresh army on the way he met a powerful king by name kala yavana this kala yavana considered himself to be completely unconquerable when he heard about the many humiliating defeats of jarasandha in the hands of yadava brothers krishna and balarama kala yavana decided to help him because he had already heard of krishna killing kamsa defeating jarasandha and creating havoc so kala yavana became friends with jarasandha and which is completely like 30 millions of army they mlechas millions of 30 millions of mlechas so mathura was surrounded by the immense mlecha army of kala yavana for the first time in the series of series of these fights krishna and rama paused stopped to think the huge army which was approaching from a distance immediately krishna said look anna now the yadavas are surely in great trouble the army is huge we are now surrounded by the enemy on all sides kalayavana is repu is reputed to be very powerful he was teamed now with jarasandha there is a possibility that they would take yadavas as captive or they may even kill our people so i suggest that we build a city in the middle of the sea and transport all our people overnight where they will be safe then we can take care of this kala yavana palarama thought it was a good suggestion so immediately krishna being shriva narayana called the devas architect the chief architect of devaloka Ashw what is his name vishwakarma the chief architect of the gods he told him i want within a matter of few minutes the it the, the in the middle of the sea a beautiful city needs to be built so be it vishwakarma said tatastu there rose out a beautiful a golden city it was not easily easily accessible at all it was built in the city like the pattern of devendra's devalokam with golden spikes decorating the house with the wide beautiful well laid out roads gardens palm groves charm full of charm with the, with the streams of lake inside the inside the city so that there are gardens for for yadavas to go and play so this this was so beautiful and the city was called dwaraka the gift gifts were sent by devendra and devas to this city indra devendra sent a huge hall an auditorium an assembly hall by name sudarma varuna sent horses which could run very fast as fast as the wind varuna kubera sent immense wealth to the city each one of the devatas remembered that shriman narayana had given them the powers he had given them the the delegated the their positions the, the, he is like a proprietor shriman narayana who appointed these souls in the respective positions ceo cfo general manager production manager hr manager like that the, these devatas were occupying the positions there were only few jivatmas who occupied their positions for their that particular lifetime after their lives 
some other jivatma would appear occupy those positions because of their karma so now these demi gods or devatas sent to krishna they grab the opportunity to be grateful and sent so this they could do whatever they could to enrich the city with all wealth and prosperity with the power of his yoga krishna transported all subjects in from mathura without their knowledge when they were sleeping to the new city overnight the city of mathura became empty krishna then told his brother the next step we should take the army of kalayavana had entered into the city since since it was night they were all resting early morning when the army was awake they looked towards the gates of the city the army was looking at the gate of the mathura city and the soldiers spotted one very handsome very majestic very with a peacock feather on his head a blue hued wonderful divine form was trying to run towards the city gate and he was looking at this army and started running little bit faster to give them an impression that he is running away with fear and immediately they those soldiers three four soldiers who spotted him krishna they went to report to kala yavana their chief who was taking rest in his camp in his hut my lord there is a young man at the gates of the in the city of mathura it looks as though he is trying to escape from the city he is scared he is running away i think he is, should be krishna it is it is, we need to go and see him and you need to go and see for yourself and tell us he advise us what we should do kalayavana stepped out of his tent and walked to the spot where they said they spotted krishna so he stood rooted to the spot completely overwhelmed he was overawed with the majestic divine beauty like a full moon which was just rising krishna stood there handsome like the one he descended from the heaven itself his dark frame was completely was completely shining glittering and he was like a paran jyoti and he was wearing a yellow silk cloth pitambaram on his chest could be there there was a srivatsa chinna a huge dark mole called srivatsa and on his neck he was wearing a jewel called kaustubam his eyes slightly slightly red at the edge kariyavagi pudai parandu milirndu shevariyodiya neenda periyavaya kangal ennai pedamai seidanave tripanaalvar mentions in amalanadi pira kariyavagi dark pudai parande well laid out large darting ruddy lined huge beautiful red lotus like just like a like just like a freshly bloomed lotus flower like red eyes those eyes was were completely enchanting to kala yavana they were the, the his eyes were like a f- just bloomed lotus flower there was a s- slight smile on his face and his is teeth were not visible but there was a smile called smita manda smita uh, uh, an impish impish charming smile and his ears were gleaming with the makara kundalam kala yavana had heard about the description of krishna from sage narada and he said this must be the krishna i have heard so much about his prowess his pranks fortunately for me he is there in my front alone and without even a single weapon he is there standing empty handed and i am also armless i just stepped out to see him now is the time to go capture him and kill him with my own hands this is a gift i can give to my friend jarasandha who is on his way and he will be pleased with my action so krishna 
stopped for a while, turned to make sure that Kala Yavana is coming, make sure that he is noticed, make sure that he is recognized by Kala Yavana that he is Krishna. As though he were trying to escape unnoticed, he looked all around with a slight, with a fake fear in his eyes and he, he looked dartingly, with, he looked very, very much on all sides and began to walk away fast towards the open, away from the gate. So Kalayavana also did not have a weapon. So he started running, following Krishna. Krishna looked back and now he began to run faster as if he were fleeing for life. So Kalayavana ran faster. Stop, you coward. You are said to be a brave young man. You are said to have killed Kamsa and many Asuras and Rakshasas. If that is so, why don't you stop and fight with me? I find you now different from the picture I heard from others. You are such a coward. And why did, why did Krishna run? There is a reason for everything what Krishna does. So, if you have, if you have courage, come and fight with me. I have no weapons. Stop. But Krishna was running like a like a wind. Do not think I belong to the belong to the, the clan of Chanura Mushtika, the wrestlers whom you killed in the Kamsa's palace. I am not like that. I am made of iron. It will not be easy to even touch me, let alone kill me. Perhaps you are running away from me because of that. At the time he increased his speed. Krishna, the Parabrahman, who he cannot be reached, who cannot be touched, who cannot be even, even chased, followed and comprehended by the Rishis, by the greatest of the great Yogis, now pretended to be within the reach of Kalayavana. He, he was, sometimes he was near so that Kalayavana does not stop. Sometimes he goes far so that Kalayavana gets frustrated. So the race went on and on. And for after some time, he went into a cave, a dark cave. Krishna went into a cave. And so this is your plan. You thought I cannot find out if you go into the cave. So he also entered into the cave. For a moment, he could see nothing. And Krishna, why does he do all these things? With his mere sankalpa, he can kill. With his sankalpa, with his will. But he wants to play all this leela for us to enjoy his pastimes. Paritranaya sadhuna vinashaya chadushkrita dharma samsthapanartaya sambhavami yuge yuge. Krishna says, in order to protect the sadhus and to get rid of the evils, he would come again and again in this yuga. That is his avatar. And that is the avatar ragasya. So, avatar ragasyam, one needs to understand so that we would be exactly knowing what's the purpose behind the avatarams. In fact, the avatarams are not supposed to be like our, our birth. The avatar ragasyam, the avataram which he takes like Rama, Krishna, Drasimha are all real. And they are not illusion, they are real. But they are made of suddha sattva. It's not like our body which is made of flesh, the, the blood, the bones, the hair, the pus. Ours are due to our karma. We cannot take a huge form or a small form or a different form, many forms. We cannot just at our will be, be there everywhere. Whereas Bhagavan Narayana, when he incarnates, his qualities like Jnanam, Balam, Aishwaryam, Viryam, Shakti, Tejas are all there, even in his avatar. It is because of his Sankalpa, he takes this avatar. It is always transcendental, unlike ours. We do not know our previous birth, next birth, last 10 births before. Whereas he would remember everything, every time, at all times, under all circumstances. Because he is a different jati. 
he is paramatma he is our master the birth of bhagavan which is incarnation as per his own sankalpa he incarnates when there is a need to establish dharma he takes avatarams so that we enjoy his divine leelas otherwise he can kill the asuras just by his sankalpa and he also says ananya chintayanto mam yajana paryupasate tesham nityabhyuktanam yoga kshemam mahamyaham people without any with stray thought completely focused in me if they recite sagasranamam if they recite me if they think of me if they contemplate on me i would take care of their yoga kshemam yoga means it is an acquisition of things you may or you may not have that is the yoga that which you may have or may not have you want more that is yoga kshema is the preservation of what you already have preservation of things that you have acquired to sustain is kshema to get is yoga yoga kshemam mahamyaham i would take care of your yoga and kshema kama the desire leads to yoga to acquire more and and raga the attachment kamam ragam ragam is attachment the attachment leads to kshema which is preservation of things attachment to my house to my phone to my iphone is to preserve to sustain to make sure that i wipe the screen of my phone every time so that it doesn't get destroyed it doesn't get broken so that is preservation kshema so raga leads to kshema kama leads to yoga but if you put back this kama on krishna and raga on krishna that is desire on krishna and attachment to krishna then he takes care of yoga kshema which is having acquiring things as well as sustaining things he takes care so krishna now he is giving his leela here with kala yavana so kala yavana goes into the cave and he saw he, it was pitch dark he could not see anything so suddenly he saw a, he closed his eyes and open to get at least a semblance of a, at least an iota of what is inside the cave so he saw one small form one form was reclining was sleeping at the in the corner he saw one form so he thought the sleeping form is krishna so he said get up krishna i would kill you don't try to sleep the only way to make you get up is he started kicking the sleeping krishna whom he thought krishna the sleeping form slowly moved and slowly opened the eyes and he looked all around who had disturbed the sleeping form it was not krishna and by the time he realized the sleeping form got up and kala yavana found the eyes of the stranger resting on kala yavana they were completely red with anger the eyes so the next moment kala yavana was full of ash he was burnt by that person so here we we should know who was the form the form in the krita yugam there was a king by name mandatha in the krita yugam he was he was the ancestor of rama in ikshvakukula the sleeping man was the son of mandatha his name was muchukunda muchukunda so muchukunda he was like a he was like a jewel in the surya vamsha from the ikshvakukula he was like a jewel a great man a great ruler a fighter and a dharmic dharmic person he was he was quite good so now muchakunda for a long period he was very much loved by devas and by everyone the deva devas were very particularly fond of him 
Muchakunda was fighting with the Asuras along with the Devas and was successful in protecting them. So we would, uh, we, it's almost time, we would touch upon the Muchakunda story, how it comes to Krishna in, in our next week. So have fun. Sarvam Shri Krishna Arpanamastu. Kavitar Kasimaya Kalyana Gunasaline Srimate Venkateshaya Vedanta Gurave Namaha. Danyosmi.